Welcome to SchoolNet's webinar series of past finalists and winners in Microsoft's Partners in Learning Forum in South Africa. I am Fiona Beal and I am hosting this webinar. I would like to introduce you to Helen Robertson, who will now tell you about her project, which she has renamed It All Started with a Cell Phone. Over to you, Helen. Good evening, everyone. I'm Helen. Um, I'm going to go back to the first side, slide, just because I like to do it in order. Um, the name of my project was uh, Functions for Technologically Functioning Teens. The project hasn't really changed name. It's more about um, the process that I went through to get there. And really, the process was I got a new cell phone. And I wanted to use it as much as I could. And so I started with a little bit. And my intention was never to actually enter a competition. But eventually, when it came to entering time, uh, I had a project that I could enter. So I spent a weekend putting the project together in terms of a presentation, and that's what happened. So the original idea was to use the technology available in the classroom to its full extent. And I like this, ma this maze because it really shows how a project develops. You think you're going from one corner to another corner, but of course it's never like that. You get thrown curveballs, and you do all sorts of different things that you never thought you'd get into, and then that's what happens. So. Uh, now, I worked in a high school. I was teaching high school mathematics. And what I did notice was that even though I had a new cell phone, most of the children in my classroom had phones that were worth more than my laptop. And all they were using it for was, you know, the standard BBM or WhatsApp or Facebook or to play music. They weren't using them to their full capacity. And it just irritated me. I wanted to see it used more. If I was using my phone more, why couldn't they? Well, it started off with using the phone as a, an administrative tool. So I had my calendar on my phone with all the timetable loaded into the timetable slots. I also attached all of the PowerPoints or whatever I was doing in that lesson to my phone. I synced my phone with my laptop at home and my school computer so that I could work on either machine. I could also work on my phone while I was standing in a home affairs queue or in a Woolworths queue. I could do my lesson planning at any point. And this was as far as I thought I would take it. But then it went a little further. When I asked the children to take out their phone one, phones one day to put their, their test dates into their phones, the whole atmosphere in the classroom changed. It was immediately uh, more relaxed. And some of them even said that you know they write things in their diary only so that they can put them into their phones during break. So why do you have this tool in your pocket and you're not using it to its full extent? Here is an example of what my Outlook calendar looked like. Uh, you can't, well, that's typical teaching week. And then I would then make notes on each of those. So we get a little further on in the maze. I've used it as an administrative tool. And I get to another point where I think, well, let's start using Facebook, because Facebook is accessible from your phone. And I'm starting to teach a, quite a difficult section in my grade 10s. And the section is plotting functions. And anyone who's taught mathematics knows that plotting functions is quite a difficult concept to teach to grade 10s. They haven't really done anything like it before. And one of the main problems is their insecurities about it. So I wanted to offer support during this time. And I did that through the Facebook group. I also gave out my details, which is, you know, you're never quite sure as a teacher whether to do it or not. But I did give them out so that they could contact me over WhatsApp. And I have not had anyone abusing that. Even now, I know they still have my number. And they are able to abuse that privilege of having my number. But the only time I ever get contact is if they do actually need help with the problems. Now, attached to that, and there's a little side project. I thought, well, they can download an app on their phone, which allows them to see how functions are plotted. In the grade 10 syllabus or curriculum, they actually state that it's more important to see the effects that all of the variables have on the function rather than to plot the function point by point. But because grade 10s are plotting it for the first time, 
they're going to just spend most of their time learning how to plot it and not see the difference that A makes in Y is equals to AX squared plus Q. So by having an app, I thought they could then all see it immediately. I have taught using graphing software on a, a display before, like an overhead display, so that they can see the changes immediately. But as you know, it's completely different doing it for yourself and seeing it on a media that you can do it for yourself. I'm going to show you now a screenshot of the Facebook group. And I took this right in the beginning where we just started, so there's nothing really too interesting. You'll see that also that I posted a document on the Facebook group where they could click on links to get apps for their phone for all of this thing. Now, not every child had a smartphone, and it wasn't about every child having a, a smartphone. It was about using the tools you had. So the other classes, we had six grade 10 classes. I taught two of them. All of the other classes were still plotting it in conventional method. Um, they were getting the same education. My classes, they plotted more functions because they had the phone to assist them. But the other classes, they still got the same thing. So it didn't actually matter at the end of the day. If they didn't have a smartphone, they were still able to access Facebook and things like that from their computers. Thank you for that question. I hope I've answered it. OK, and this is actually the inspiration I had for downloading the app. Uh, the year before, I'd made a whole lot of posters for my classroom, and I'd found this picture of the iPhone 3 with what looks like an app. I thought it might be GeoGebra. I printed it out on A3 and had it up on the wall, and then that's what gave me the idea. It's amazing where your inspiration comes from. Okay, moving on. Now you'll see that the maze went in a completely different direction, and that's exactly what happens. You start thinking, well, I'm doing well with this. How can I go further? And I discovered this fantastic tool called Prezi. And Prezi is not accessible on the phones. And that's the one thing that deviated from my thought process. I'm very pro using phones in class. Uh, I developed a presentation on Prezi that they could then teach themselves how to do trick functions. And I'm going to show you a screenshot of it. But you can go to it if you click that link at the bottom. I'm pretty proud of it. Basically, what Prezi is, is it's a zooming presentation. So you would zoom in to the different notes. And what it allows you to do is to see uh, hidden notes inside it. So if you do go to this presentation, you'll see that next to cosine on one of those brackets on the side, then there are actually little notes or love letters to my students that I put in myself. Now, what they're able to do is all of the information that's big is important and the things that they should study. All of the love letters to my students are small and things that they don't really need to study, but they're helpful. So when you print it out, you won't see the love letters. You'll just see the important things. Prezi is an awesome tool. I think it's easier than PowerPoint to use, uh, but it does need an internet connection to view it. So it's not great in that way. OK, so you think you're almost at the end. Uh, I loaded all of the answers onto the homework site at the school. The, the homework site was actually started as a result of the work that I had done, which, well, made me feel quite good. But then they could check their work as they were finishing. Now, the thing with salt and working by yourself is that you do have to um, monitor it quite carefully as a teacher. And because they're all working individually or they're sharing the phones and things like that, it's actually quite easy to walk around and check that everyone's getting the right idea. Rather than teaching at the front, you're letting the smart children whiz through everything. And then the slower children either latch onto them or they go all the way to, uh, or they come to me for help. I'm sorry, I don't know why the presentation went back to the beginning, but it did. And now we're back to the right side. OK. So I'm going to show you an example of what this was. They had a stack of, it was probably 25 pages of functions that they needed to plot. Now, these were the same worksheets that had been used in the school for at least five years. And we'd never actually finished 
these worksheets as a result of having the cell phone there to help with the plotting my classes were actually able to finish the worksheets and those that didn't want to use the phone those that were there was opposition to it the children especially so those that uh, didn't want to use the phone they were still required to do the same amount of functions as the other ones maybe they got the better end of the deal then I don't know they spent more time doing their homework so I think those using the technology it was better for them and then in getting close to the end the difficulties was the opposition now you would think opposition would come you know in the form of parents being con concerned about phones being used in school or management being concerned my main opposition was actually from the children who, who wanted to be taught in the old conventional way and like I said previously we were able to um, to factor that in I still required them to do the same amount of work but that was it now the other huge difficulty was the different devices blackberries are great for um, communication so all the BBM the whatsapp the Facebook the whatever they are really really fantastic at but if you're trying to plot a function on that tiny little screen it's not going to work I read a study recently that the size of the screen affects how much of it is retained which then you've got to start wondering about the 7 inch tablet screens you should rather go for the 10 inch but that's another sort altogether so different devices are a huge problem because on different devices you have different apps and different apps require different ways of putting uh, the information in so you can't just give one instruction you need to go to each child individually what's great though is that children want to learn using the tools they have so often they will teach themselves and they will only ask if they really really get stuck because you're not teaching at the front of the class you've got that whole 45 minute session to walk around and give help wherever you can another huge difficulty I call it angry birds but it was everything uh, recreational associated with the phone basically if they could not be trusted to use their phone in a constructive manner then they weren't allowed to take it out and that's the only way that you can deal with it you can't restrict the learning of others because two people in the class can't control themselves they just don't get to take their phones out and they're actually okay with it they don't fight too much if they do fight well then you've got methods to sort them out it's not the end of the world okay I like the next slide there it is I just thought it was funny it's uh, I did have an occasion where a teacher walked in and she shouted at the children for having the cell phones out not realizing what was happening um, but it was rectified so it was fine uh, the last slide of information is this one the successes well I've said that more examples were done we just did a lot more work at least twice as much if not three times as much work as other classes now I like to think that I inspired other teachers and I think I did but it would be in small ways I would find something small that would excite one person and then they would start their journey with technology and something small with another person but not anything huge uh, and the huge thing was though that it challenged me and it helped me to grow to be a better teacher as well as to learn more about my profession learn more about what's happening in technology and how we can make it work now at the end my project was really more about the using the function apps to plot the, the functions uh, and all of the other stuff that happened before hardly featured at all just shows you that you think you're doing something groundbreaking in one area and then it turns out to be actually the small thing that makes a huge difference the last slide is a picture of one of my students using a phone to plot the function I think there are two straight lines on that and he's busy drawing it in his book and that is it I'd like to thank you for listening and I'm handing the Hi Helen, that was absolutely brilliant and I love the way that you used um, that background of the puzzle that was so creative. Thank you Fiona, I think it's called the Inspired Teachers Conference um, 
and I think it's run by the quality company. I say I think because I'm 90% sure, but I'm not quite 100%, so I'd rather go err on the side of caution. Uh, my topic is going to be on practices that happen when you're using technology in the classroom, but how to change your teaching techniques before you have the technology. So that means something like the clicker system, which is highly effective, uh, can be used in a classroom that has no clickers. A clicker system costs between 20 and 40 grand to install in one classroom. And obviously most schools don't have that. So how can we use those technological practices within a classroom that doesn't have those kinds of resources? And I'll go into paper and I'll go into cell phone use and things like that. And um, that's a very brief overview. That was of Helen what Robertson we'll telling us about her project it all started with a cell phone. Thank you very much, Helen, for sharing your ideas. Good night, everyone.